Good evening and welcome to Current Issues. I'm your host, Hisham Tilawi. Welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight is going to be a little bit different from what we are used to. We will be speaking with a cartoonist, a political cartoonist from Brazil named Carlos Latouf. We will tell you what a political cartoonist is and uh, we will tell you about all his drawings and sketches he has been making over the years. And to me, you have journalists, you have writers, you have authors who will spend hours and hours writing an article to tell you about something and a cartoonist of course they will spend hours and hours drawing the sketch but as soon as you take a look at it it will tell you the whole story of what a five page article will tell you but before we go to uh, Carlos though let's uh, talk about Barack Obama now we told you here on this program what they're going to do to Obama we told you that he they will bring him way up there and they did just to tear him down and they are it's a game ladies and gentlemen and if you still have not figured out how this works you got a problem you got a problem up here because you've got to understand what is happening you've got to understand what we have been telling you year after year after year how this game is played this elections year is proving us right now I don't want to say that we have not made any mistakes on this show but I can tell you one thing you can go back to the first show we made and between then and now you will see that we were pioneers in bringing you the analysis, the truth of what is going on in the world that mainstream media will take them six months to a year before they even start tackling these questions and these issues the way we tackle it. Why? Because theirs is designed it is designed to accomplish an objective. Ours is designed to, uh, to uh, accomplish an objective too, which is bringing you the truth. Their objective is to program your brains, program your mind to see what is not out there. Now it is time to attack Barack Obama because they are finished with whatever usage they had taken out of him they are finished with it and you will see now it started with that picture where when he went to Kenya and he was dressed up in actually it was not a Kenyan traditional clothing or dress it was a Somalian dress it was an African um, traditional dress and everybody got on him and started calling him Barack Hussein to bring you back to Saddam Hussein that there is a Hussein in his name and then his pastor Jeremiah Wright he made some statements a week after September 11th a statement that many many people have made but now, after seven years, they are bringing it out. Well, you had it, and you had the picture since, not, since 2006, but you did not bring it out. And what Jeremiah Wright said, some people said, well, you, Barack Obama, is un-American if you do not disown your pastor. You know, you have to respect the guy. You know, here you have the presidential post that he's after. 
and he did not disown his pastor. I don't want to say he stood by his pastor, no, he did say that it was wrong. But really, was it un-American? Was it un-American to say that the war that we, the United States government, brought this on ourselves? If we believe in freedom of speech, even if it was wrong, if we believe in freedom of speech, we should not be casting people out for that. You know, Barack talked about coming together. I would say that we finally came together. Blacks, whites, Hispanics, Arabs, Muslims, Chinese, whatever we have in America, this weave that we have, we finally came together to do exactly what Jeremiah Wright did a week after September 11th. We all now are opposing the war. And when I say all, I mean about 85% of the country now, because that's the latest statistics that 85% of the country does not like the war and thinks that the government lied or made a mistake. It was 85% of blacks, ladies and gentlemen, from the beginning who opposed to the war. But it was 69% of whites who actually supported the war. So in the beginning, the divide was so huge that the majority of blacks in the country did oppose the war. The white people of America came along at a later stage to oppose the war. I agree. My country, right or wrong, I agree. And we have to defend our country, right or wrong. But does that mean, just like if you have a, a son, one of your children who is on the wrong path, you're not going to hate him, you're going to fight for him to get back on the right path. Now what is so wrong with criticizing your child to bring him back on the right path? And that's what Jeremiah Wright has done, and he was called an American, and someone who hates America. Something that I can relate to. If you have been watching this show from the beginning, you remember the first months and the first days and the first probably couple of years into the war. People called here and referred to me as someone who hates America, someone with an agenda, someone who is un-American. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you can say that 85% of the country is un-American. I respect Barack Obama for what he did. Stand it up for what he believes in, even though he did not agree with his pastor. Or maybe he said that for political reasons, which I believe he did. The point is, if you believe in freedom of speech, and if you believe in freedom, period, it is not un American to criticize the actions of the government. As a matter of fact, if you are a patriot, if you want to know the highest degrees of patriotism is dissent. There's nothing wrong with dissent. Dissent brings people back on the right track. As now, white, blacks, browns, yellow, red, all the colors in the country are coming together to say no to this war. A war that Jeremiah Wright said no to from the beginning. 
I'll tell you what, let's go to the phones and then we will come back to our guest who is waiting. But let's go with David on line one and then we will come back to Carlos Latouf. David, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, your remarks about Jeremiah Wright, okay, his remarks refer to hatred to white people. Tell me what he said about hatred to white people. I'm not talking okay. about... He, he I'm, I'm talking making about... remarks that about Hillary Clinton has never been called an end. Okay, that's not the remarks that I'm making a, a comment on. I'm making comment on the remarks that he made after September 11th that they... Uh, uh, that the media is trying to destroy Barack Obama for. Now, if he made other remarks, David, I did not hear them. And if I did, I'm sure I will comment on it. I will. And there's nothing wrong to disagree with people on those remarks. Okay. What did he say? I did not, I did not catch that one. What did well, he say? It's, it's about racial issues, about slavery, you know. And believe me, I'm a white individual, and I don't believe slavery should have, it is right. But I take issue when blacks will... Uh, condemn a simple Confederate flag, but yet they will stand behind an African flag where the enslavement began. Okay. Uh, David, to tell you the truth, I am not ready to actually get into that, not for any reason than just not prepared. I understand that. Yeah. I, I really like your program because you will speak the truth. Thank you. And I, I do watch you, and I apologize. I caught probably the last three minutes of this, and I heard you, you know, uh, uh, agreeing with what uh, his pastor said. You know, and I didn't realize you didn't hear the, the complete uh no, no, I did not. The only thing that I agreed, well, actually, it's my remarks in the beginning of my opening monologue was not uh, to agree with Jeremiah Wright, but to agree with uh, that the war was the wrong war. And uh, basically, I agree with that. yeah, that's basically what I agreed with, and I did not hear the whole thing. I apologize that I did not, uh, David. I appreciate your call. I appreciate your support. I thank you for your time, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, let's go to Mike on two. Mike. Mike. Yes, I'm yes. calling concerning the. Uh, hello. Yes, yes, you're on. You are on. Oh, okay, I'm on. I'm calling, uh, you know, about the deal with, with uh, Obama, okay. uh, Pastor. Okay. You know, I, uh, I, I believe that uh, what he said was the truth. I totally agree with him. But being that he was a, a pastor, you know, perhaps he shouldn't have said what he said. Tell me and what I you think, disagree with him. What is it that he said that you don't agree with? Well, what he said concerned what I agree with is that I did when he called it, uh, Hillary was never called an end and when he said a, a, a cab in New York never wears by uh, Hillary because of a color of her skin and which is the truth but uh, but being that he was a, a pastor he, his tone should have been lowered okay you know uh, as he was okay. saying it you know it should have been lowered okay. now getting back to the, the gentleman that just called concerning the confederate flag yes the confederate flag to back black people mean hate when black people stand behind our colors that's for love and respect okay mike i appreciate your call but i promise you guys we will tackle that issue one day, but today allow me to let you go now, and we because today I have a completely different things to uh, discuss. Okay. I just I just wanted to comment on the Barack uh, Obama thing in the beginning. Yeah, but, the media studies hurt me. Yes, okay, definitely. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, please do not call regarding the. Barack Obama and the Confederate and the African and all that stuff because that's not what we want to talk about today. We have a whole different program. If I knew that, I would have 
just made this program to tackle those issues because we we're gonna have to tackle some of these uh, issues one day or uh, uh, or another. But um, I'll tell you what. Um, uh, let's go ahead and um, the. Um, you know, sometimes you read an article, and this is exactly what we want to talk about today. We are going to show you some of this gentleman's work about uh, political issues, about the war, about what is going on in the world, and sometimes just by looking at what these cartoonists have to show you, you will understand the whole thing, uh, and you will understand that, like what, what books could not make you understand. Just by looking at one drawing, one sketch, you will get it. Now, the first uh, that I heard of Carlos Latouf, it was probably about a month ago when Israel uh, um, was... Now, I've seen some of his sketches before, but I really never paid attention to it until I saw this one. It was about Gaza and uh, where an airplane, an F-16 flying and then there's like a baby carriage uh, on, the, um, on, the, on the ground and an Israeli missile hitting that baby carriage if we can put that uh, picture up and that's what actually uh, brought this particular cartoonist to my attention and then when I started looking at his drawings and at his sketches, that's when I figured out that, you know what, this is a writer, this is an author, this is a political analyst that really does a pretty good job at letting people understand what it takes us an hour just to tell you something and we can't even, uh, you see the eye sees millions of objects and the brain actually um, you analyze things much, much faster than when you hear it or when you read it. It's just so much faster. I guess you have a super highway straight to your brain when you are looking at uh, pictures. If we can put that picture, please, the one that says it's yellow and it says Gaza and uh, it's, it's yellow. It's the only one yellow. If we can put it up now, please. Okay. Yeah, this one here is uh, what really caught my attention because that's exactly what was happening ladies and gentlemen at that time Israel was bombarding Gaza Strip and many many children they killed about 120 people in about four days one third of those people were children some of them were infants so I saw this one and it's like this particular poster this particular cartoon actually says the whole thing now, without any further ado, please allow me to welcome to the program Carlos Latouf, who is uh, talking to us, speaking to us from uh, Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Uh, Carlos, welcome to the program. For your interest in my work, and, uh, and thank for your attention of your audience. Yes, sir. Uh, now, I wish I can speak Portuguese. Uh, uh, you know, I can, you know, I'll talk to you in Portuguese, but I don't speak Portuguese. So we're going to try to do it in English. That way, I'll understand you and our viewers will understand you. Uh, Carlos, tell me uh, something. I mean, uh, how did you get, uh, apparently you don't have a talent. Just a second. Can I, can I give two cents on uh, Barack Obama? You're discussing oh, about sure, Barack sure. Obama. <laughs> sure, go ahead. Sense, as uh, someone living in third world, there's no difference between Democrats or Republicans. But uh, so uh, there is no difference, no matter if uh, Democrats or, or Republicans. Um, the 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 the, um, the flies are different, but the shit is the same for for me as a Brazilian. So, um, however, it's interesting because people are attacking Obama not because he's Democrat, but because he's black and Muslim. And uh, sometimes it looks like the U.S. democracy is uh, showing its ugly head. It's like, uh, as I can say, um, the United States have 
race, racial issues. It's clear to everyone. So let's let's see if Obama uh, wins the presidency. If he will be one, just another, uh, as Malcolm X used to say, another uh, Uncle Thomas. Let's let's see. Okay. Very good. Uh, tell me, uh, uh, Carlos, uh, how did you get most of your drawings and sketches? It's basically about the war and about what's going on in the Middle East. Uh, and you are you are very good at making people understand the issues just by some of your drawings. How did you get into this? Uh, Dr. Tilawi, I was in uh, West Bank in 1999, inv inv invited by a uh, Palestinian NGO, human rights NGO called Palestinian Center for Peace and Democracy. And uh, I made, at that time, I made a cartoon where a Jewish settler shot at the back a Palestinian. And there was a saying uh, like, uh, stop the hunting season. And I sent this drawing to this NGO. They liked it a lot and invited me, invite me to go to West Bank to see the reality of Palestinians by myself. So I spent there uh, something like 15 days visiting Hamala, visiting Hebron, uh, and other cities, Palestinian cities, talking to ordinary people, seeing how people live under occupation, talking to people, uh, Israeli activists in Jerusalem. So uh, I got a more realistic and better picture about the the occupation in Palestine. And when you when you check this set by yourself. When you see how the Palestinians live under occupation, there is no way for you. Um, uh, there is no, uh, you cannot uh, stop supporting the Palestinians. You become instantly a supporter of Palestinians because if you have a soul, you cannot see such situation and don't feel yourself hurt. So uh, there is there was no choice for the, for me um, than to become a supporter of Palestinian human rights and struggle. Okay. I I hope I I, uh, I hope my English uh, can be y understa understood. Your English by you. your English is perfect. Believe me, it's uh, <laughs> it's a lot you. better than a lot of people out here. So uh, you, <laughs> Thank you very much. You, you're speaking, you're speaking fine, and I'm sure people uh, understand what you uh, what you are saying. Now, uh, now, were you always? I mean, you said back in 1999, but before, I mean, were you always like into politics? Were you political? Uh, uh, did you write articles or political articles, or was this like the first time back in 1999 that you really got involved in this? Um, I used it to be a political cartoonist working for local local uh, trade union papers, workers' unions papers, leftist. Okay. And um, I'm involved with politics international and local Brazilian, South America, etc. But uh, in, in before 191997. Uh, I was what you can call just a professional cartoonist with no personal involvement in politics. I use it to make um, political cartoons, but not a personal involvement with okay. politics. Now, Carlos, let me let me ask you something. Uh, we're going to show some of your work, and then I'm going to ask you to briefly just tell me why did you draw these particular ones? Uh, for instance, we are looking at one now. Uh, I guess it was during the Lebanese war back in 2006 when um, when, when Israel bom uh, uh, bombed Lebanon. You have an Israeli holding a bomb or cluster bomb, little Lebanese children. 
and then you have Uncle Sam very much happy and clapping. Can you tell me why you, I mean we know why Israel was bombarding uh, Lebanon, but why do you think that Uncle Sam, or you know, signifies the United States, was happy to see that? Can you tell me? Sure. Um, the the point of this cartoon is about the massacre of children in Tana, uh, Lebanese uh, city of Tana. Uh, where um, Israeli Air Force or artillery dropped many uh, cluster bombs and etc. and killed scores of civilians. Uh, the point of putting the echo sign is because the military and economic assistance of the United States uh, to the state of Israel to carry on its war of aggression, not only against Lebanon, but also against Palestine, and now against Gaza. Okay. Now, very quickly, the next one we're looking at is Gaza in red. I guess people are swimming in a swimming pool of blood. You have yeah. the United Nations serving drinks. You have... It. <laughs> Tell me about that one. Yeah. Uh, that, that one... Uh, uh, have uh, again the Uncle Sam having fun with all the the blood of the Palestinian people, and uh, the guy with the towel is uh, all the, right. yeah, all the, the the vice uh, the, the the prime minister of Israel, and of course uh, United States, uh, United Nations. Um, have no have no real power to prevent or stop this carnage. And, and and the guy that is sunbathing, that's the world basically don't care. Yeah, yeah, the world simply uh, don't care, and the, not not exactly the world, but the West, the Western world, and the, the United Nations is serving is like a servant of the interests of the United States and Israel. That's the point of this cartoon. And, and uh, some uh, conservative Jewish Zionists use it to say this cartoon is anti-Semitic because he, according to them, explain uh, the blue liberal. The blue liberal. Okay. Now, let me, let me, okay, what we're looking at now is the World uh, Trade Centers with a boomerang hitting it. Is that what you're saying there? It's clear. The 9-11 the is a result of the long-term uh, foreign police policy of the United States. The longer term, the longer record of invasions, wars, uh, occupations by United States, but uh, I will tell you something. Um, sometimes I think, obviously, we're gonna never know exactly what happened, what what uh, what is behind the attack in 9/11. Right. But uh, I will most, almost say George W. Bush had something to do uh, with this attack. Now it's you know, not only about the Muslim or Arabic terrorism. I don't believe this shit. I think there is something about these attacks related to George W. Bush because who's gained more with these attacks uh, than George W. Bush? Okay. Who? So you know, with with these with this one, this particular picture that we're looking at with the uh, World Trade Center, that's exactly what Jeremiah Wright, uh, Barack Obama's pastor, was saying that we were hit because of what we had done. So. That's exactly uh, what, um, what he was saying, and that's exactly what you're drawing, uh, saying. Now, uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, I, remember, I, I remember, just, just uh, one thing. Uh, this, this drawing of the, the boomerang, I made, if I can remember well, in the same day of the attacks, in the same day, a few, few hours uh, later. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's go to the, the, the another Gaza cartoon. Okay. 
Uh, the other one is where uh, you have like two Israelis with uh, like butchers, Israel occupation forces in Gaza, and one of them it says, okay, uh, we'll cut the power and gas, what's next? The other one says, we'll cut heads. Yeah, yeah. I guess that one is just self-explanatory. Yeah, definitely. But, you know, uh, sometimes people uh, imagine, oh, uh, if, if the Israelis are carrying on a holocaust against the Palestinians, where, where are the, the gas chambers? Where are the, the, um, the concentration camps? Of course, Israeli is not exactly the Nazis. I mean, they are not so stupid to building uh, gas chambers, but they prefer to killing people, to killing Palestinians in a more, how can I say, low profile way. Okay. So we we can expect um, um, gas chambers. It will be too much. Stupid! It will uh, bring too much international criticism. So expect something more slow. Killing is slow. There, there is a song. Killing me softly. Do you know the song? Killing me soft. So the Palestinians are being killing slowly. So you drop a bomb yesterday, today. Another tomorrow, you kill some score today, another another day, and uh, you repress um, demonstrations of young people with live ammo, you kill one Palestinian, two Palestinians, and at the end of the day, you have a lot of dead Palestinians. So, Israeli uh, forces are more smart than the Nazis. They are more low-profile killers. Okay. Now, uh, to tell me uh, something. Now we're looking at one. Um, I guess this is more for the Iraq war, where, yeah. um, you know, it's like a war criminal. Then you walk through, I guess, the White House showers, and then you come out as a war hero. What are you yeah. saying there? Um... Uh, of course, uh, it, it, it amazes me, amazes me uh, how um, criminals, criminals, uh, criminal people, uh, criminal uh, actors are converted into um, uh, people trying to, demo to to bring democracy to Iraq. Uh, we are trying to save the Iraqis from Saddam and all this bullshit. All the time, people telling this shit in the um, uh, United States TV. And even here, in Brazilian press, for example, in the speech of many criticism, uh, the mainstream uh, user to say, uh, United States tried to de to, de to bring democracy to Iraq, and um, some people say, uh, "Oh, Iraq during the Saddam rule it was um, brutal. It was uh, um, 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 a more." Uh, how can I say, a uh, more closed regime, a more violent, uh, etc. Et et but what people can see, cannot see, is key. Before the invasion of the United States, okay. you know, um, we didn't have, for example, uh, suicide bombers. Okay. Uh, the, the people killed during this invasion far more uh, than any numbers during the the Saddam Hussein regime, you understand? Okay. So yeah. the, the the point of this cartoon is to say, in my point of, of view, there is no hero in this war. There, uh, there is no heroes. The America, the U.S. soldiers in Iraq are playing the bad guys' role. 
They are not uh, liberators. They are not bring democracy. They are killing people there. So, United States government and media are trying to wash, uh, whitewashing these crimes. Killing, this, killing this, people with a smile. Yeah, of course. You know, you know I have... Have you, have you seen videos? Uh, have you seen Car videos Carlos. made by all soldiers and Car put on Carlos. the internet? I have an idea for you. Uh, uh, McCain, John McCain, who's running for president, uh, he was in Israel yesterday and he went to the Holocaust Museum and actually cried and said never again, but yet we just killed the United States uh, uh, military, just killed a million Iraqis and Israel is having a Holocaust right there where he is and he's saying never again. So that's an idea for you for your next cartoon. Yeah, very nice, very yeah. nice. Okay, listen, you By know what's way, my it's, favorite? It's very hypocritical. My, very hypocritical. My, my, yeah, of course, hypocritical. My favorite of all of your uh, sketches is the one, and they're going to put it on the screen now, it's the one where you have an Israeli soldier with his hands full of blood and uh, washing his, his hands with a faucet that has the American flag on it. Uh, they're going to put it here in a second. And, you know, if this one says anything, it says exactly what is going on right now, and it has been going on for a long time. This is my favorite of, of all time. Tell me, how did you come up with that brilliant idea? That's the same thing Washington does with the crimes of uh, U.S. soldiers. In fact, the United States govern government are always watching uh, war crimes from Israeli and United States uh, uh, soldiers, U.S. Army. You see, tell me, when any Israeli soldier or United States soldier faced a trial about uh, uh, war crimes? Tell me, when? You know what I thought when I saw this one? It reminded me of how Israel's hands and its soldiers will be full of blood from the, the Palestinian children's blood and then the United States just washes that out uh, in the United Nations, in the media, uh, in, 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 on world politics. It makes Israel look clean as if it has not done anything uh, that's what this drawing made me really, the whole story of the Palestinian-Israeli issue is in this particular drawing where the United States always beautifies the horrible, the horrible atrocities uh, that, or whitewashes the horrible atrocities that Israel uh, does uh, against the Palestinians. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I try to, to convey a message uh, in a in a, a more understandable way, because sometimes the issues are complex to to write about. So sometimes it's more easily it's more easy to to make a cartoon because the cartoon can can tell you a whole story in an easy way for you to understand. And uh, I hope my cartoons can reach people and can bring awareness about the Palestinian plight, the Palestinian suffering, the Israeli crimes, and the uh, U.S. Army crimes. Uh, there, there, there is something I, I must tell you. Um, when I criticize, criti when I make criticism about this uh, involvement of United States and Israel uh, in, the, in the suffering of Palestinians in Iraq, I must say there, are, there is a lot of people in the United States and inside Israel who support Palestinians. There is something I must tell. There, is, uh, there are many um, decent people in the United States. Uh, I can tell you, Hattel Corey, uh, Carlos, I, I can tell you one thing. Uh, 
the United States is full of good-hearted people who are missing the truth. Once you talk to people and you show them what's going on, people, after all, they are people. And they will be able to see what's going on. But when the media, when the media tries to make the victim becomes the aggressor and the aggressor becomes the victim that's what the United States people are because they are victims themselves they are being victimized by the media itself like for instance right now we are looking this one of your latest uh, uh, sketches which is in uh, in Gaza uh, uh, an Israeli soldier holding the uh, shoes of a little child saying, yeah. tell me what you see. Yeah. <laughs> Combat boots. Yes. Um, this, is, this is about the indoctrination where uh, all Palestinians are seen by Israeli soldiers as enemies or terrorists and you can apply this, this uh, concept to any Muslims and Arabs now, um, as I, I say, uh, as I used to say, there is an ongoing Islamophobia, and people. Uh, I, I want to give you an example. Uh, if you check Google for Holy Quran, if you if you just search Quran in the Google images, and you see a lot of images. Disaccrediting uh, the Quran, for example, uh, a Quran with a head of a pig, or a Quran in uh, fruit, the fruit um, uh, latrine, you know. So uh, this is clear. There is a, a, an attack, a clear attack against Arabs and Muslims after 9/11 because they leveled all the Arabs and Muslims as terrorists. And sometimes they call terrorists and fundamentalists the, the legitimate resistance against the occupation. For example, the Brazilian mainstream media refers all, always to uh, fundamentalists, those Iraqs who resist against occupation, or the Palestinians who resist against occupation. Okay, uh, Carlos, uh, very quickly, and uh, let, let's be uh, brief, that's very quickly, now we're looking at one, it's a sketch, uh, it's in Arabic, it says, La takun abdan dalilan al which means, in Arabic, it means don't be a slave for the occupier. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, where United States uh, soldier is actually, you know, with, uh, 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 holding the chain of uh, an Iraqi soldier. Is that how you see it? You think that the Iraqi army is nothing but enslaved for the United States? Yeah, definitely, definitely. It's like the, the South Vietnamese army serving the U.S. troops during the Vietnam War. Uh, in fact, the United States is playing the divide and conquer game in Iraq. They are putting, they, they, they take advantage, took advantage of uh, historic um, differences between the Sunnis and the Shias. They use it to divide Iraq in order to control it uh, more easily. I can tell you, if Sunnis and Shias could join forces and fight the, the common enemy, I, I, I'm sure the occupation of Iraq uh, would be result in more than 4,000 dead on the side of U.S. Army. And the same applies to Palestine. It's a shame to see brothers fighting brothers, Hamas fighting Fatah. I know Fatah have a long record of corruption and collaboration for the U.S. and Israel, including trying to withdraw uh, to, to, to make a coup d'etat against the Hamas, the, the democratically elected government of Hamas. Okay, I know about that, but it's not time to, to divide, it's time to be united.
united. The Arabic people must to be united. That's the problem. The Zionists are more united than the Arabs. The Arabs must to, to join forces, otherwise they will be smashed by U.S. imperialism. Okay. Uh, now we're looking at one where uh, Uncle Sam is uh, talking on the phone where he's finished with Iraq, Palestine, and Afghanistan and still have the, uh, I guess, the uh, dossiers of Iran, Cuba, Venezuela, and Bolivia. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, you see that the Uncle Sam is my favorite villain. Um, this drawing uh, has to do with uh, foreign policy, U.S. foreign policy. Of course, uh, Palestine, Iraq, and Afghanistan are not finished yet. The, the, the resistance is there. The resistance is working. But uh, the, the schools represent all the dead, all the, 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 the people killed by the U.S. interference. And the, the dossiers uh, means the possible uh, interventions, the, the, the future interventions against Iraq. In, in Cuba, it's, it's going, uh, and it's happening for decades, the embargo. And if the United States had a chance Cuba will be uh, invaded by troops, and Venezuela and Bolivia, it's clear to me, the United States put his big nose in everywhere, and sometimes there, there, is, there are people to kick the uh, uncle son butt out of the place, not all the time, but I hope the resistance, not only in the Middle East, but all over the world, can face the U.S. imperialism. Okay. Uh, so you, th you think the United States policy failed in Vietnam and it's going to fail again in the Middle East? Um, I, I, it's clear to me like a bright day. Because uh, the Viet Cong, when I, when I see pictures of the Viet Cong, those uh, the, those people from the, the peasants, the people people from rural areas, uh, they have no uh, no um, technology, no modern equipment, but they were uh, able to face the the U.S. troops with modern weapons and uh, tanks and helicopters and napalm and all this stuff. So when I, I see the, the Iraqi, so Iraqi resistance, Iraqi guerrillas, I, I, I see many similarities because they are defending the, the uh, land against uh, external aggressor. So there is no way for you to put them now, in their knees. Th there's a sketch where you're comparing uh, what is going on in Palestine where the Israeli occupiers came from Europe and then uh, what happened in, in, in America when uh, the Europeans came to the United States and you know what is the uh, correlation there? Uh, I think this, this cartoon deals with occupation, basically occupation. And he, he, when I see, for example, these Cassens rockets, handmade rockets, rockets, um, and uh, compare it to the uh, high-tech missiles imported from the United States, it's it's disproportional the reaction from Israel. It's disproportional. And uh, when I decided to make this cartoon. I try to to make the same relation. I mean, the the Indians with arrows, the occupier with a rifle, and the Israeli soldier uh, with 
all the war machines sponsored by the United States and a handmade rocket okay. uh, launched by okay. uh, uh, Hamas. All right, uh, Carlos, now we're looking at one where the American Eagle is taking a big chunk of, uh, it's sitting on top of the world, and it's, it's uh, well, what are you saying there? Dr. Chilawi, if you don't understand what I say, please tell me, okay? I'm sorry? If you don't understand what I say, please tell me, because uh, sometimes I think... No, no, we understand really everything you're poor. saying. We, are, we understand everything you're saying. Uh, okay. Uh, this cartoon I made about the U.S. Imperial imperialism attacking the South America. This is uh, for an article uh, for one of those uh, trade union papers. I, I told you so. Okay. Um, now, you know, there is one where uh, a Palestinian child and there is a big fence and it says Palestine denied to Palestinians. Well, uh, yeah. Um, uh, this, I guess it's, it's very much it's self-explanatory. Yeah, yeah, but there is something I, I like to tell you. Um, I, I represented the Israeli flag like a, 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 a barbed wire fence, right? Right, yeah. I, I see that. It is the Israeli flag, yes. Yeah, but there is something very important to tell you. My detractors accuse me of being anti-Semitic by using the Star of David in my cartoons. Because the Star of David is representing the Judaism. You understand? You get it? Yes, yes. But the problem is that the State of Israel use religious symbols as uh, government symbols, the symbols of the State of Israel, political symbols. So the flag of Israel has the Star of David. The, the, the symbol now, of the Knesset uh, uh, is a menorah. Uh, Carlos, uh, very quick because we don't have much time left, but there's, uh, there's a cartoon here uh, it's saying uh, poor die first. You know, you're comparing Katrina, there's a yeah. black man, and also in Iraq. Are you saying that? Uh, the, tell me very quickly uh, in like 20 seconds, what are you saying that? Is that how the world sees the United States? Yeah, I, I think in, in both, in, in many wars, the, 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 the poor die first. And I specifically made a black guy that, because in Katrina it was clear to me the black people was uh, more affected, and perhaps because more mostly of victims were black, the Washington didn't give them too much attention. Okay. Um, uh, Carlos, uh, do you think what's going on between Fatah and Hamas that the United States and Israel have a hand in it? Uh, that they got something to do with it? Of course. Yeah, United States, uh, you want to know uh, if the uh, United States has interference between the, the two? Okay. Very good. Um, no, 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 I, I didn't understand. What's your point exactly? I didn't understand. No, I was I was talking about the uh, you know you had a sketch where you had Fatah and Hamas inside a grave and an Israeli soldier was yeah. pouring. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. And then and then you have Uncle Sam watching there because that's my understanding, by the way, that what happened between Fatah and Hamas uh, has Israeli and CIA hands in the middle of it. Yeah, of course. As I said, the United States and Israel are playing the divide and conquer game in, in Palestine and Iraq because to control a divided country is more easily. Okay. Carlos, I am sorry we are completely out of time. I just want to say thank you very much for coming on the program. It has been a pleasure having you on. 
Dr. Tilawi, thank you very much for all your taste and kindness. I hope I, I, uh, I'm trying my best to, to make myself to be understood. I hope uh, you, did. you can... You did a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful job. Thank you. Okay, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now uh, we only have like 30 seconds to say we will see you next week. And of course, as usual, I have my little one with me who got his report card today and he did very, very good. So, did you hug your child today? We'll see you all next Thursday. It's going to be Mordechai Vanunu from Jerusalem. We will see you next Thursday. Go do the right thing. That's how people see us. Good night. Opinions expressed in the previous program are solely those of the segment's producer and do not